this is Dr. Janet Bruno, and today I want to talk about the topic of obesity. Very specifically, I want to talk about the usual causes of obesity. Now, certainly we know that obesity is one of the most serious health problems facing America today. And in fact, if you're listening or watching this, if you are obese, you run the risk of contracting quite a long list of dreaded diseases. So it's imperative to really begin some corrective action as soon as possible. And while it can be quite challenging to change a lifetime of habits, corrective action in this case really relies on a great deal on the reason why you became obese in the first place. So let's talk about that. What are the most common causes of obesity? Well, the most common cause of obesity is truly consuming more calories than your body needs. Okay, so there's actually many actual causes and contributors as to why certain people are obese or not. But the bottom line truth really centers around the fact that more calories are consumed than are necessary. And one of the main reasons why obesity is just so prolific in America today is due to the quantity of food people are eating. I'm sure you realize that the, the plate of food that you get in a restaurant is actually much, much larger than it was 20 or 30 years ago. That's a real problem with just the quantity of food. But another big reason is the high amount of fat in the food, very specifically the saturated fat. I mean, really, let's face it, people don't become obese by eating tons and tons of fruits and vegetables. Rather, the obesity really stems from consuming foods that are called what we call calorie dense, calorie density. So much of the calorie dense foods are foods that are animal based foods that are really sadly what many people prefer to eat. And calorie dense just means for the size of food, there's lots and lots of calories. That's calorie density. Now, that's the most common cause, okay? Eating more calories than you need. Now, the second cause of obesity deals with our sedentary lifestyle. Now, certainly, modern technology is just completely awesome in so many ways, but there is a negative side effect, and that is that in today's day and age, you really don't have to raise a finger to do more than many of the common things. You know, changing the channels on the TV, finding entertainment from your sofa or your computer. In so many ways, physical activity has been reduced to an absolute minimum. And as you know, we've also removed physical education from our elementary schools. So gone are the days, it appears, when entertainment means taking a walk in the park or going to shoot a few hoops, uh, jumping rope, or just simply taking a nice walk down a, a neighborhood street. People no longer have to grow their own food, so that doesn't take work. So for many people, going to get a quick meal requires nothing more than just hopping into your car and going through a drive through or po possibly going to a local grocery store where you can purchase some ready-to-eat foods that are usually pretty high in calories. So now a third cause of obesity, which actually may come to a surprise to many of you, is lack of sleep. Yes, lack of sleep is actually a cause of obesity. And there's actually two different mechanisms that are going on here. One of them is the fact that sleep deprivation or, la or really less than seven to eight hours of sleep a night actually results in an increased secretion of a hormone called ghrelin. Perhaps you've heard it. It's G-H-R-E-L-I-N. This is a hormone which is actually causes an increase in your appetite. It's an appetite stimulant which if you're someone trying to lose weight, you certainly don't want your appetite to be stimulated. So a way you can combat that is try to get adequate sleep. Because if you don't get the right amount of sleep, this hormone gets produced, which then causes your, your appetite to be increased. So that's one mechanism. The second mechanism has to do with your body's automatic self-preservation response. Now what I mean by this, is lack of sleep is actually interpreted by the body as a stressful situation. And whenever your body goes through stress, the response is to slow down the metabolism 
in order to preserve any calories, any calorie reserves or fat. For example, in the old caveman days, as an example, if a lion's running after you, that's stressful. You're running, you're running, you're running, but your body's actually slowing down the metabolism so that if you're running away and you're not going to have food readily available, whatever your body has as a storage of, of energy, which is usually fat, that actually gets protected and the metabolism slows down. So long are the days, long gone are the days of the caveman, certainly. But when your body goes through a stressful situation, that same response kicks in. The body tries to slow down the metabolism to help preserve itself. And so if you are consistently not getting enough sleep, that is causing stress on your body. And your body has a response to slow down the metabolism. So again, if you are trying to lose weight by not sleeping enough hours in the day, you're actually doing yourself a big disservice. Okay, so make sure you get good sleep. Now, another cause of obesity is any type of disruption in your endocrine system. Okay, researchers are actively exploring this and they've found some foods that actually affect your fat metabolism in a negative manner. Now, one of these foods is fructose. Fructose is something that doctors have been evaluating and it appears to have a very strong link between fructose consumption and fat or lipid accumulation. Okay, and that's clearly not something you want. So if you can reduce the amount of fructose in your diet, that can be helpful according to the early research. It's not definitive, but this is the early research. And certainly there's other more uh, less powerful, I should say, causes of obesity, but one of them is if someone does stop smoking, many times people take the addiction toward the cigarette and they turn it towards an addiction towards food. So some people can become obese after stopping smoking. And then another thing is there's certainly some medications. If you're taking them for a particular disease you have, some medications do have a side effect of having weight gain. Okay, so these are the main causes of obesity. And as you can see, Clearly, the first three major causes of obesity that I've mentioned are well within the power of most people to change. You really do have the power there. And admittedly, I will say it is very difficult to do. It is challenging, particularly the need to overcome some acquired taste for rich foods or your need to exert effort to overcome years worth of sedentary life. Those things can be difficult to change. But it's very important to understand that the changing the way you think of food and changing the way you move your body can be extremely powerful. Only you can make these changes. In fact, your doctor cannot provide the solution for you. It involves a change of mindset, which can only be done by you. Internal motivation has won far more battles than any amount of external motivation. So truly, except for the rare cases where endocrine functions or drugs are involved, it is you who ultimately will determine whether you can be cured of obesity or not. So truly, if you are someone who struggles with your weight, I encourage you to make a commitment today to set this as a priority in your life. Your body, your health, your vitality, and your enjoyment in life will thank you. Now, I hope you found this useful and interesting. This is Dr. Janet Bruno wishing you a healthy and a happy day.